Hey class, um, welcome to Physics 211, Physics Online. Uh, I'm going to get us started with some information here in Chapter 1. So as we get started, Chapter 1 is going to be all about an introduction to measurements, talking about things like scientific notation um, and unit conversions and dimensional analysis. But before we get started, let's talk about physics. What is physics? What does it make you think of um, as you signed up for physics class, as you knew you had the great opportunity to take it? Um, what is it? What are you going to be learning? What does it deal with? Well, I one time Googled it uh, just for fun to see, and one of the online um, dictionaries told me that physics was a study of matter and energy and how they interact with one another. So basically, physics is all about how the world works and just about everything in the world because all things are pretty much made up of matter and energy um, in the physical world. So some examples of what physics accompanies or excuse me encompasses is things like space flight, radio waves, um, things like motion, how cars move, how rockets are able to fly, the forces that are involved in those, how engines work, um, the thermodynamics, of different systems, things like lasers. I like uh, biomedical engineering a lot, and so things like MRI, X-ray, ultrasound are all physics-based and quite amazing. For those of you interested in civil engineering, things like bridges and buildings um, are also all based on physics. And so as we study this semester together, we're really going to be studying the amazing way that God created the world to work and understanding all of the best explanations to how he made that possible. Um, but let's get started with kind of a review of basic things with units to start with. So we're going to be dealing with a series of different units throughout the semester, but almost everything we deal with this semester in the first semester of physics are based actually just on three or four base units. The first is the base unit of length, known as the meter, which you're probably familiar with. The second is the unit for mass, which is kilograms. The third the unit for time, which we'll use seconds. So the vast majority of all units we deal with this semester are going to be based on those three base units, hence the name base. Um, but a fourth that you will see a little bit this semester is the unit for temperature, which is Kelvin. So all the other units that you've probably heard of, things like speed, acceleration, force, momentum, impulse, work, energy, the units for all of those different things, whether you're talking about newtons, joules, um, etc., all those are actually just based on these four base units. For example, newtons, which is force, it's a kilogram multiplied by meters and divided by seconds squared. So it's just based on those base units. So those are the units you're going to be seeing and dealing with all semester long. Now there's going to be times this semester where we're dealing with very large numbers, like the distance to the moon, or very small numbers, like the diameter of a human hair or the mass of a red blood cell. And these are super inconvenient to try to write out by hand. In fact, if I asked you to write out the mass of a red blood cell by hand four or five times, you'd probably end up with the wrong number of zeros in there once or twice. So to help us with writing things out that are very large or very small, we will oftentimes be using scientific notation. Um, scientific notation is writing a number multiplied by a power of 10 to represent the scale and the size of the number and just to represent the number accurately in a more convenient way because we're going to deal with things from the size of a galaxy way up here all the way down to the size of the atom ranging from 10 to the 21st power meters down to 10 to the negative 14th power meters. So just to kind of remind you how scientific notation works, scientific notation is used to write either large or small numbers and it's going to exist or be composed of basically a coefficient, a number between 1 and 10, multiplied by a power of 10. So for example, the width of a human hair, which is 8 micrometers, can be written as 8, the coefficient, multiplied by 10 to the negative 6, the power of 10, meters. A large number like 2.5 million seconds can be written as 2.5, the coefficient, times 10 to the 6th power seconds. To remind you how you get these numbers, you have the coefficient multiplied by the power of 10. The way you achieve these is by counting how you move a decimal place. So for example here, if we're writing 52,000 as in scientific notation, 
To get a coefficient between 1 and 10, we move the decimal place to the left, four spaces, and so our power of 10 is 10 to the fourth power, 5.2 times 10 to the fourth power. When we're writing 0 .00378 in scientific notation, we move the decimal place three places to the right in order to get a number, a coefficient between 1 and 10. So since it's three places and it's to the right, the power is th negative 3. Negative because it's to the right and 3 because we moved it three places. So we get 3.78 times 10 to the negative third power. So let's go ahead and do some comparisons. Here's a number written in standard notation. Now I would like you to write the same number here in scientific notation. Maybe pause the video, try it out. Did you try it? I hope you did. If you did, you should have gotten 1.28 times 10 to the seventh power meters. All right, here's another one, simpler one, mass of a human. Try it out. If you did it accurately, you should have got 6.8 times 10 to the one or first power kilograms. Again, you just moved it one decimal place to the left, so it's only 10 to the first power. That's a silly one. You're not going to do numbers like that in scientific notation, but just to practice. And then lastly, that mass of the red blood cell from earlier. If you did this one, give it a, or I want you to do this one, so give it a go. Try it out. So if you did this one accurately, you know you're moving to the right, so you're going to have a negative power. I got 5.2 times 10 to the negative 13th power kilograms. So there's some good examples for you. You'll see there's times um, in the first workshop and other places throughout the semester where instead of powers to 10, you'll see things written in terms of a metric prefix. For example, kilograms. 5 kilograms is really 5 times 10 to the third power grams. So 5 kilograms is actually the same as 5,000 grams. And you see other things like, you might have heard of a gigabyte, right? A gigabyte of data. Well, one gigabyte is one times 10 to the ninth power bytes of data, or one billion bytes of data. So you'll be seeing these different metric prefixes as well, so make sure you're familiar with them. You'll be needing to use those and do different unit conversions with them as well. All right, so here's some more examples. If you'd like to practice, go ahead and try them out. We already did the red blood cell together, but you're welcome to use these for additional practice as you see fit. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is unit conversions. We're going to be doing unit conversions a lot. And what a unit conversion is, is basically taking one value, um, keeping its overall magnitude, its worth, its value the same, but changing it between different units. And the way that you do this is you start with the unit, you multiply it by what's known as a conversion factor, which is something with a value of 1. So the top and the bottom of your sort of fraction you're going to use will always be the same in order to change the units from one type to another. So here's an example. Let's say I asked you to express the speed limit of 65 miles an hour in terms of meters per second. How could you do that? Well, you'd start with 65 miles an hour, and you'd need to convert your miles into meters and your hours into seconds. So you can see we're given here, and you could look these up online or in, a, uh, in the textbook, but I give you a series of different unit conversions, or conversion factors as they're called. We see that one hour is equal to 3,600 seconds, and one mile is 5,280 feet, and one meter is 3.281 feet. So what we can do to accomplish this, we're going to take our speed of 65 miles an hour, and we're just going to multiply it by one three different times. So first, I'm going to multiply it by conversion factor to convert from miles into feet. And then I'm going to multiply it by conversion factor from hours into seconds. Notice, since hours are on bottom of my original value, miles per hour, I made sure hours are on top of my conversion factor. Miles start on top, and so I make sure they're on the bottom. So you can see miles cancel out, and hours cancel out, and so that gives us 95 feet per second. But we're not done. We want meters per second, not feet per second. So I have to multiply by one more conversion factor to go from feet on the bottom to meters on top. And so you can see there my feet cancel out and we get 29 meters per second, a box worthy answer for you. So there's a brief introduction to chapter one where we're going to be dealing with different kinds of units, 
unit conversions, and scientific notation. So there's just one more topic I'd like to discuss with you guys, which is what's known as dimensional analysis, which is where we look at equations and really pay close attention to our units to make sure that they work out. So if you imagine, let's say, you know, I said you are driving down a car um, or in a car down a road at, let's say, 15 miles an hour and you drive for three minutes and I ask you how far you went. Well, you think to yourself, oh, I remember, you know, back in the day I learned an equation, distance equals rate times time. So if my rate is 15 miles an hour, my time is three minutes, I must have traveled three times 15, 45 miles. Now that's obviously wrong. You did not cover 45 miles in all of three minutes, right? So what, what went wrong, you might ask? Well, your units weren't right. Miles per hour and minutes are not the same units for time, so there was a problem in your dimensional analysis. So let's think about units and let's think about our different things we'll be measuring. So we're going to use L for length, M for mass, and T for time when we analyze these different equations. So let's look at this one for example. If I asked you, is this a valid equation, you could try to apply it to different situations, see if it works or not, but really you could just look at the units and tell me whether or not it even has the possibility of being accurate. So if we look at this, let's think for a second. All right x here has units of length, all right? v, one half doesn't have any units, so we don't have to worry about that. v, which is a velocity, has units of length over time, miles per hour or meters per second, and our time t here has units of time as well, t squared. And so if we look at our overall units, the left side has units of length, the right side has length over time times time squared, it has length multiplied by time. Our units do not work out. Length is never going to be equal to length times time, so therefore this equation is not valid, as you can see here. All right, so let's try another example. This one I want you to give it go on your own, so you're going to need to pause it after I introduce it. All right, so here's a physical quantity. Let's call it R. All right, it's calculated using the equation R equals 4A squared over B minus C, where A is speed, B and C are distances. In that case, what is the units for R? Pause it and try it out. Be sure you try it. All right, hopefully you paused it. Hopefully you got an answer for R. Let's check this out, okay? So the units for R, we have four, which doesn't have units. But then we have A squared. A is a speed, so we have length over time, quantity squared. All right, then we have units of length minus length. So on top, we have length squared over time squared. And on bottom, length minus length, a lot of people want to say, oh, then you have no units there. No, you still have units of length, right? Five meters minus two meters gives you three meters, not just three, okay? So we got meters on the bottom, or length. And so we have length squared on top divided by time squared, which I moved to the bottom, and then we still have that unit of length on the bottom. So one of the lengths will cancel out, and we get length over time squared. So the units for R should be meters per second squared, which are the units for acceleration. And again, box were the answer. All right, so that's dimensional analysis, and that really wraps up all of what I wanted to introduce to you all in Chapter 1. Stay tuned for more videos for future chapters and future examples of problem solving.